15 years of working in style like i've gone through times when like work has been amazing and there are times of feeling insecure of feeling like is it slipping away yeah. or you know what's going on i've had all those feelings social media is a big thing like it's instant validation or instant criticizing and people are very affected by it i remember when i was doing promotions with katrina we used to do fitting sometimes at 2 am in the night and again we would start our day so i may have been working hard she was working double hard i think you're expressing a lot by what you're wearing you can say a lot about who the person is what they feel what their personality is like trust comes with time i feel that loyalty is lacking right now in the industry i think we're in a phase where everybody wants to work with everybody one day my dad has taken me to the barber and cut my hair and i've come back with like a mushroom cut or a boy <laughs> cut or something like that and i think my mom was traumatized like i became a bit tomboyish in my style also because i was like okay now i have to go with this vibe you know <laughs> Welcome to Take a Pause with me Varun Dugirala. I was um trying to find a line to start this one off and I was trying to find things <laughs> and I came across this one really tiny video uh, where James McCoy says that fashion is a way fashion style is a way for you to communicate things without saying something. Yeah, it's true. And so that's so powerful because we often look at this as just a trivial thing, right? What you wear is what you wear, and people say, "Oh, why do you make a big deal out of it?" and all that stuff. But there's so much more to it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more to it. Sometimes I feel because I'm a stylist, and you know, I end up traveling a lot in the world, and I love to like observe the way. Every city has like a feeling. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Like Paris has a feeling. Everyone's in dark colors. Everyone's in black. Like Bombay has a certain feeling. Delhi has a certain feeling. I feel like you can say a lot about the culture of the city, who the person is, what they feel. I think you're expressing a lot by what you're wearing. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, and even somebody who's like, you know, somebody who's like very proper. You can say a lot about who they, what their personality is like. Someone who's a bit shabby. You can even say what they are a bit lazy. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean to yeah. put things together. Yeah. Uh, and also about their mood in the day. You know. So I think you can say a lot about someone with their with their style. Yeah. I, and it, this has been a space that's always fascinated me. Um, I was just saying this to you before we started recording that I I grew up um, with my mum having her boutique, so I would like. see garments being made i would see everything from zari work happening to i would go on sourcing um you know trips to the occasionally just to make sure that i can pick up and drop her when she was in bombay and other places and i always saw that bringing something together was also so interesting right It's like so how do you mix the right things together i mean i think that's what attracted me with styling when i went i went to new york um to study at parson school of design and i did a fundamentals in design course which basically had everything within design just like any other kid that 16 17 i was confused i was like oh what should i do with my life you know yeah. but i knew it was something creative so i knew it was design but it gave me kind of like how liberal arts schools are parsons for the first one year gives you the liberty to study design as a whole mm. you know so you study fashion you do product design 3d design everything and i think while i was there i kind of realized that when i was doing a lot of like um projects and stuff putting something together was very interesting for me you know what i mean um and a lot of our projects were about like take like coming into groups and then putting things together and making something amazing out of it you know what i mean so i think that's when i realized oh styling is interesting you know what i mean because before that i think my headspace was oh i have to be a fashion designer yeah. which means i have to create from scratch but then styling was kind of something that was happening slowly slowly in india of course there were stylists world over but i was like okay this is an interesting path you know that i already i'm a creative person but i'm putting things together i'm taking a garment from somewhere i'm taking shoes from somewhere i'm taking a hair and makeup reference from somewhere and i'm putting a look together and even that is an interesting art to have yeah, you know not yeah. everyone has that innate abil- ability to do that So I think yeah I mean I think that's what attracted me to styling that's what styling is I still 
uh, suffer explaining to my father what styling is. My dad's like, okay, so your boutique, like my dad will say something. I'm like, dad, I'm a stylist. Like I, now finally, after all these years, he's understood that, okay, this is what I do, yeah. you know, because I think even now, like you try to explain to people what a stylist does. Yeah. And even today when you say stylist, now I start saying fashion stylist because then they're like, oh, you style hair, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's also... The assumption is it's a stepping stone to becoming a designer, but it doesn't yeah, necessarily have to be. but not necessarily, yeah. honestly. Like for a very long time when I was styling, even I thought, oh, I want to design and maybe I will at some point have my own brand. But it could be from a, st from a stylist or like say a celebrity or a fashion stylist, you can pivot to many other things. You mm. know what I mean? You can yeah go into many other arenas and diversify yourself and pivot yourself in fashion, it doesn't have to be that you become a designer. Yeah. You know, not necessarily. I think, you know, I've, re I've been reading a, l a lot about or hearing a lot about like the growth mindset, mm -hmm. you know, it's just so important. A lot of podcasts actually talk about it a lot. And I feel that in whatever field that you're in, I think it's very important, of course, to study what you're doing and like excel in that, you know and keep growing and a lot of young girls that I meet that want to be stylists and yeah. stuff, I keep telling them that even when you start practicing, you know, and you start, you're on the field and you're styling and you're designing, whatever, you still got to read and learn more because every day there's something new happening, yeah. you yeah. know. And if you, if that curiosity dies, like you're going to, things are going to get mundane, it's going to get monotonous, you know. So I think staying excited about the world and yeah. being curious is so important to any Human, the human mind, yeah. you know. So I think, yeah. Were you always like that from the time you were a kid? No, I think I've become like that. Yeah, I think I've become like that in the last couple of, maybe a po a COVID, post-COVID. Um, because I think, you know, for the, la for the first 10 years of my journey as a stylist, of course, like I was learning and growing, but I was learning a lot on the field. I was also intensely busy. I used to work like a crazy person. Yeah. Every day was like hectic, hectic, hectic. Barely slept six, seven hours a day. Now I sleep very well. Like I'm very particular about self-care and time to sleep. And I'm, But I feel that I was, in the first 10 years, it was just horse blinders. And I was like, very super ambitious and I was like I just have to be at the top of my game I just have to do it I have to work with everyone and I have to like I was just one of those people that just was going 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 yeah. like on, in that race you know yeah. so I feel that that time I didn't I got, got disconnected with a lot of other stuff. I was so busy working. Great, it paid off, you know what I mean? It's awesome, you know? But today I feel it slightly differently. I've pulled back a little bit. I wanna know more, I wanna have the time to know more. To, to educate yourself about a lot more, you gotta have the time to do that, yeah. you know? So now I think I choose work slightly differently, you know? I choose work that I want to do, people that I wanna work with, that, that I, people that I would enjoy going to work with. And then I leave the time to do other things as well. Travel, hear stuff, read stuff, spend time with people that are engaging. Yeah. yeah. So you have a ratio, you said, you have a ratio. Yeah, kind of. right now I'm on a 60-40 ratio, which is amazing, I love it. It's like 60% work, 40% is a lot of other yeah. things that I'm doing, you know, which is, a lot of it is travel. And I think what you just said about the, the first period of your journey, I think that's important, right? Is that Every kind of thinks about balance from day one. Yeah. It won't work. It won't. You go through a period of working towards that balance. Like, this is what I want 100%, to work towards. 100%. 100%. You got to hustle, yeah. as they say, yeah. your way. And then finally, you come to a point where you're like, okay, great, you've done it. And I'm, you know, honestly, I'm saying all this right now. When something excites me, if I start something new, I'll go back into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and this time would have helped me yeah. do that. And I know for sure that there will be something else that will come up, like yeah. post-styling. I will pivot to something else, whatever it is. Um, and I know the hustle energy will come back. Yeah. But I needed this time to reflect, introspect, you know. Yeah. What is it next? Because honestly, whatever it is that you decide to do, when I first started deciding to do styling, celebrity styling, fashion, I was so obsessed with it. Mm. It didn't even feel like hustle. I was like excited every day of my life yeah. to wake up and work 13 hours you know and I was fine you know and I think that energy is very important and if you go to that period of time 
I feel that no matter where you might study in the world, once you start coming, especially to Bombay, um, and work in in the industry, there's certain things that you you tend to learn in that first period yeah. uh, in your journey. What are the first couple of things that you quickly had to learn as you got into? I it? think drop your ego, like completely drop your ego. When you're learning and when you have just started your career and stuff like that, a little bit. Like you can't, the whole work-life balance thing, like, I mean, I know Gen Z is very much like, oh my God, work-life balance. And like, you know, but honestly, when you first start, like you got to work like a dog. You got to hustle. That's how stuff happens, you know. You got to give it your all, 120%, you know. So I feel that, yeah, definitely like, don't go into like, oh my God, do am I working that extra hour, two extra hours? I was working four, four, five, five hours extra. I would wake up. I remember when I was wo- doing promotions with Katrina, she was working so hard. I was working so hard. We used to do fitting sometimes at 2 a.m. in the night. I would go back home, post promotions at 10 o'clock in the evening, in the night, sleep, wake up at 2 in the night and do fittings with her then again we would start our day so I may have been working hard she was working double hard yeah. you know what I mean yeah. so uh, when you're working with celebrities first of all like you gotta understand that they are working under immense amount of pressure they cannot deal with you having any kind of tantrums you know what I mean you gotta understand you're doing a job they are the focal point they have to look amazing they are facing the camera you're behind the camera you got to understand that and understand that they have to look their best. That's what you've been hired for. So drop all that ego, work like a dog, work super hard. And yeah, and just keep learning and keep doing your job better and work as a team, you know, whether it's me and my, like with me, without my team or without the hair and makeup and without the support of the celebrity, their management, nothing is going to happen. You know, it's all teamwork at the end of the day. So I think all, understanding all that has been, yeah. I think these are the things that I've learned along the way. Yeah, it's also because they're the focal point and they're under that pressure. What everybody else has to kind of do is to make sure that they are as calm as possible as they 100%. get into doing what they have to do. Yeah, because if you're going to harrow them in any way or bother them, etc., etc., it's going to reflect on your work and it's going to reflect on the person and then eventually on the mood and then eventually on the energy of the room. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that that's, that's something I've learned along the way. Yeah. And of course, at the end of the day, like... Everyone I work with, it's a collaborative process. Like when I work with an actor also, if I don't like something, I'll tell them. I'll be very clear. Like initially, I used to be very scared when I first started. I'm like, oh my God, I'm working with these celebrities. And like, I can't say anything and all that. And then I realized, I'm like, I've been offered this job for a reason. Like if something is not working, I got to say it, you know. And I started working more and more. And honestly, the people that I worked with the longest, whether it's Karina whether it's John B or whether it's Katrina or like whoever I Frida like the people that I worked with the longest are the people my best work comes out on you know because I we understand each other now that it is completely collaborative you know and that's what's important you know sometimes when I work one off with someone I'm like okay I'm not that's not my best work because maybe I'm not able to say anything maybe we're not on the same page yeah. but the more and more I work with someone it just gets better and better yeah, yeah. Collaboration also comes with trust, right? I mean, yeah. There's a trust that goes both and ways. And trust comes with time. Yeah. yeah. So that's why sometimes when people work for long periods, like in Hollywood, for example, uh, Elizabeth Stewart is a stylist. She's very big. She's worked with Julia Roberts and um, Julia and Moore, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of other people, lots of other actors, uh, Amanda and uh, Jessica Chastain. Like all her best work has happened with them because she's been with them for 15, 20 plus years, you know, and she's still continuing to work with them and they look amazing on red carpets. It's just, they get each other. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got it and the trust comes with time, like I said. So you're, and I feel somewhere, honestly talking about this, I feel that loyalty is lacking right now in in the industry. Mm. Uh, I think we're in a phase where everybody wants to work with everybody. Great. Awesome. You know, go ahead, do it. You know, work with different people. 
but i feel the more chances you give somebody if you like their work two three times the more chances you give that work is going to get better and better and better you know that's why people that have had long associations like say for example alia al rufai and anushka sharma like amazing like they do their best work together because she they just get each other yeah. riya and sonam you know what i mean yeah. like it there there's some kind of like um I don't know it's just some kind of union you know what i mean you don't have to say things things kind of just flow it just happens yeah. like i feel i do my best work with bebo you know cuz i've been working with her for so long shalina dipika like you know there are people like within the styling yeah. industry i'm telling you like the people even with hair and makeup yeah. it's very similar yeah. yeah do you feel this something that when you kind of starting off building that i know there's the you said time but is there almost a strategy to follow or saying i want to build this long standing relationship what do you start with you know i feel that patience um communication uh hard work is a big thing mm. if you want to continue to work with someone and you're working with someone consistency and hard work is very important if the client is not feeling like you're working hard enough to make sure that every time they present themselves mm. or go out that you're putting in 200% of effort and you're making sure they look different and you're showing up for them you know yeah. and you're available for them that all these things are very important that's what a long standing relationship that's how a long standing relationship happens sometimes like a lot of young people end up putting too much unnecessary attention in the beginning of their career on money you know i've never done that like when i first started i'm like okay i have to build a relationship with this person i need to do amazing work and money was up and down sometimes you know and i'm like it's okay it's fine you know it's secondary at this point you know when and if and when it has to come in the right proportions it will come but right now it's about building that relationship with that person and doing your best yeah and then it's just money will happen in its own course of time you know what i mean and did happen you know um so i think all these things are very important you know i feel what's also it kind of shows when you when you when you focus on other things and not really understand who the, who you're working with as well they don't naturally look like they're wearing something that is them yeah and that kind of shows and right honestly it's very important that's why communication is important understanding who the person is understanding what they, because i always feel like when we were talking about ranveer singh earlier is that he is so comfortable and he enjoys what he's wearing hence he can carry it off hence he's looking so good he's looking so confident and everyone's like oh wow that's cool he looks cool or that's different yeah. it's edgy or whatever you may have a even an opinion about it that oh my god it's too much even i may have felt like that but sometimes it but it still feels natural you know so that will only happen when you work with someone enough and communicate with them yeah um and understand who they are and then you can style them in a certain way you know and with many people who kind of i feel what also happened is with his style being the way it is because they talk about and we um what has happened is many people also tried styling themselves yeah as yeah but it's not worked for so lots shows. of people it yeah it shows that 100% it'll work for some people won't work for some people some people have tried tested gone back to their what works for them yeah so that's why i feel like say a ranveer singh or a ranveer kapoor mm. ranveer is that minimalist cool chill easy guy who's not trying too hard who's wearing something like any other kind of like any other guy who's like well dressed chic will wear you know very sober style and that's what works for him yeah. and that's why he looks good you know uh i actually feel his personal style in his personal time is much better than sometimes what he wears even in like i don't yeah. know promotions and yeah. stuff like that um and ranveer singh ranveer has his own style i'm sure when he's shopping himself also he's picking up stuff that he's just got an eye yeah. you know um yeah and saif for that matter like saif and me have had so many conversations about like brands that he likes and he's very particular about finishing he's very particular about like the shoes and very how classical in that sense very classic in his sense of like style and his rathore and his rajesh pratap singh and his ashish soni and like certain designers in india and he's very inquisitive about who are the new designers that are doing like interesting cool stuff but it has to be synonymous with like his personal style 
you know and a very classic cuts and so i and he takes a keen interest in fabrics and like finishing and stuff like that and again a lot of innate style a lot of innate i probably think he's one of the best dressed in india yeah i agree yeah and i think taking a keen interest is is the thing right is that what has always tended to be the case is that i feel it happens a lot more with men maybe lesser now in the last many uh, few years is that style is always like but no but that's not something i need to really get into or like i'll just wear you know people not any more after instagram <laughs> everybody is dressing up everybody is dressing up it's given a platform to everyone to express what they feel how they look everybody has a get ready with me video everybody has a get ready with me video everybody wants to be today whether it's influencers cricketers bollywood actors uh tv show hosts uh you know stylists desi- everyone wants to be express to, wants to express themselves yeah. in a certain way with the way they look everyone say a keen interest in what they're wearing yeah. airport style has become a thing <laughs> like you know what i mean like i just feel like like styling and fashion and design and all of it's become an integral part of your daily life you know even even the way people style their homes now you know it's saying a lot about who you are you know so yeah and do you feel that that's what makes it exciting for someone like you because as this entire space has expanded and people's interest has expanded um there's so many avenues for you to explore i mean 100% no that's what i think this is why like this time is very interesting to me because i just feel like there are so many there's so much sometimes i always sometimes i also feel curiosity also comes with feeling a sense of being overwhelmed because i just feel like there's all this happening in the world there's so much information and there's so much going on and you feel overwhelmed with what what is it that you want to do next because you're actually excited about so much you know and uh, you know and and i think yeah i think that happens with curious people a lot like you know ayan is basically my first cousin ayan mm-hmm. mukherjee mm-hmm. and he's also a director and i think that curiosity lies in a little bit in our family as well <laughs> he's also a curious kid and i'm also and we're always discussing about like what's going on and you know we're always kind of very intrigued with like how the brain works and you know things like that we'll yeah. always have all these deep conversations yeah. and he's like that as well loves to travel and um you know loves to know what's going on in the world he's like he always feels like oh my god i'm working so much and i'm doing film but i want to know what else is happening you know what i mean yeah. uh, what else is happening in tech and what else is happening in the world and what else is happening in design and oh tell me a little bit about like what's happening in the fashion world and like so yeah i think it's it's interesting you know coming yeah. back to your point yeah um uh, that i think it all helps you eventually you know in what you're doing yeah it's um, there's this thing i i think i think einstein said it if i remember right where he said that whenever you're stuck in something um and you feel like you can't find an answer or solution walk away from that do something else explore something 100%. totally different come back you it will just present itself 100% 100% like 100% and i just feel like we also like like talking about life i don't think i've ever spoken about this but like say for example when you are we all human beings go through lows and highs and in their life personal life professional life etc etc and i on i remember told me something very interesting once i was going through a heartbreak and he was like you know when you have a feeling remember that your mind is playing games with you okay and when you have a feeling whether it's like a feeling of feeling low or feeling sad or whatever know that it's a feeling and that let that feeling come sit with it and let it pass because feelings will always pass okay whether it's a ha- super happy ecstatic feeling or whether it's a feeling of feeling low so just understand that and know that it's going to pass it's not forever it's temporary you know so let it pass so i just feel like it's it's very interesting you know what i mean like all this thing all these things always teach you things like and we'll always go through the lows and highs and whether yeah. it's professionally or personally and i've also gone through it like 15 years of working in styling i've gone through times when like work has been amazing and there are times of feeling insecure or feeling like oh my god like uh, is it slipping away or you know what's going on i've had all those feelings but today i don't feel like that like every time i feel like 
every time I feel like, okay, am I going to do this forever? Mm. Uh, definitely not. I'm going to, I'm going to grow, want something else, want different things, priorities will change. And that's life. That's what life is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got to accept it and face it and pivot to the next thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And talking about the next thing, uh, how did the Dhoom Dham company happen? Oh, so you know Dhoom Dham, m- m- my best friend Ashi Dua, she's also a producer and she makes a lot of movies for like Netflix and a very accomplished girl. And she and me have been very close friends for many years. And she always told me, she was like, oh, you're styling and you're doing all this celebrity stuff or whatever. But how are you ever going to take this to people that actually need help, Dan? Like besides celebrities, celebrities already have everything on their platter and they have people stuff. Like, but what about people that need your help? Like, what about like people that uh, you, you know, like my friends will always ask me like, oh, should I wear this with this? And they'll send me pictures. And I'm like, okay, that's interest- That's an interesting mm-hmm. thought. It started with that thought. And then she was like, you know, what if we put a show together wherein you curate designers and we bring together like 50, 60 designers and we'll just start with Bombay. We'll do a one day show. Let's see how it goes. We'll do festive and wedding and whatever. And you can be there at the show. You can meet people. People can ask you what they should wear, not wear weddings, festivities, holidays, etc., etc. And you will actually on ground meet people and understand. And I'm like, okay, that is an interesting thought. Why don't I take my expertise to on ground, you know, started off with that. And now we're doing like six shows, we're going all over India, we're going to Dubai, you know, we want to eventually pivot to doing online, you know, nice. um, maybe even productivize like Doom Dham, you know, stuff like that. And, and it's very interesting sometimes where it starts from. And she's the one who basically, she and you know, we have a showrunner as well, Disha. And they are the ones who ro- run the show. I look at it creatively, mm. which means which designers, curating designers, what the social media is going to look like, yeah. what campaigns we are doing, stuff like that. So it's very clearly divided between... Yeah. And weddings are a big part of... Weddings, festivity. It For us, Doom Dham is not so much about like... Um, of course, brides can find pieces, but it's more about people that are going for weddings, you mm. know. It's it's your family. It's Which is like, so true. Nobody thinks, everyone assumes that the styling requirement for a wedding is just yeah, the Yeah, it's wedding. just the bride. No, but you know, actually, Dhoom Dham will have a lot of stuff for people that are going for weddings. Or Diwali, or Raksha Bandhan, or Ganpati, or... So, Dhoom Dham is a mix of all that, you know. Uh, you will find clothes for all year round. You will find clothes for the festive season going for destination weddings. And of course, brides can also come and their families can come and you'll find stuff for them as well. But it's about that. It's a, it's more wholesome than just the bride. Because uh, if you think about it, the number of festivals we have, the number of weddings oh that God. happen. Uh, the I number mean, of India has festivals all year. Yeah, all the time. It's, it's And there's always a celebration and which means that you always need to find something to wear for it. So I, my my standard thing used to be is that I would have two kurtas, which are very minimalist. I would just wear that and yeah. say people won't notice. And at some point of time, became okay. Let me just try stuff around it, and then. Um, but I also then realized where I drew the line was. I once bought something from Masaba. Huh. I wore it. Huh. And I loved the way they look, but I just didn't feel comfortable after a point and I'm like now I'll just mix and match your things but I can't I realize that I'm maybe sim- you're a classic you know what I mean maybe that's your style yeah. maybe that maybe you would like maybe an Antaragni would look very good on you have you heard of the brand I have but I haven't tried it you, you should like it's interesting it's very classic but it's got an edge in yeah. different ways like silhouettes and stuff like that so I just feel like maybe stick with what your innate style is but within that whatever you can experiment yeah. you don't have to go the other end of the spectrum but you know sometimes what I you mean? have to try that to figure where you want to put it it's that. okay sometimes you try it and it doesn't work and or it works sometimes you could try it and be like oh I love this new direction you know and then kind of take that but as far as you feel comfortable and you feel like you're enjoying you got to enjoy it man fashion is for that only you got to enjoy what you're wearing yeah. and yeah it's, and also you, you got to enjoy it and you it's almost like the the smaller things which maybe nobody will notice will make it fun for you of course like for for men for example like some someone like say someone like you you could 
enjoy like the classic silhouettes or the colors or the neutrals or the monotones but maybe you enjoy accessories maybe you enjoy a great watch you know or a good pair of shoes and maybe that that's what you accessories make a huge difference to a person's um um the way they dress yeah. or their style yeah. you know so i'm someone i could i'm very simple with my dressing actually and i love a uh, a great pair of sunglasses or like a really nice bag or like you know stuff like that but actually my style is very andro i'm always kind of in oversized stuff or like you know a uh, uh, slightly like that andro kind of feeling yeah. like oversized blazers and oversized shirts and shorts and sneakers and high tops and like that's my style yeah i actually want to take this to the other side of the spectrum I'm saying um i feel the internet has also a large obsession with over analyzing what everybody is wearing yeah um and in some cases that's a lot of fun like um i'm going to say this on the record i'm always checking what diets are being post- posting i cannot not check out diets are being we all do 5 to 6 7 times a day i love it it's so it's entertaining yeah. what's going on or kya ho raha is basically what you're waiting for Actually, every day i think it's very funny as yeah. well like it's really funny like yeah. whoever runs diets are being doing a good job cuz it's very funny it's very entertaining sometimes they'll criticize you sometimes they'll say amazing things and i think it's great fun like i enjoy like reading it and stuff yeah. and um whoever is running it has a great sense of humor yeah and you got to understand that as well and just enjoy their uh, yeah. uh, daily updates <laughs> yes, yeah i'm saying that also cuz I, i feel that the more and more people are learning about what style can be yeah. um, how it can be a part of their lives yeah. um it also teaches you all the things that you never thought about right is like l- reading about style took me down the rabbit hole of reading business of fashion regularly exactly and, and business of fashion is so interesting they do some incredible articles they have a podcast as well actually imran ahmed um, hosts the podcast and it's amazing and they bring some amazing people on the podcast and i like that it's short it's not too long yeah. and it's very interesting um and to know i actually podcast i love podcast you know i've for what, the what are the long, podcasts you obsess over all, all for the longest time everyone kept telling me oh you should hear podcast you should hear podcast and i was like oh my god who's going to say and honestly i realized i'm not reading as much yeah. you know i'm not such a reader um so hearing helps me a lot because i um like i'll read articles and stuff but i'm not such a open a book and read but actually i'm doing that now i'll have my coffee i'll listen to my podcast and i can hear it for hours yeah. you know yeah. and i feel like i'm absorbing more when i'm hearing yeah. you know um i love we were talking about lex friedman i love lex friedman i love tim ferris very interesting a friend of mine kabir introduced me to uh, tim ferris and um the journal the wall street journal does some really interesting podcasts as well acquired have you he- heard yeah, have acquired, you heard yeah. of acquired they're a bit long yeah um but very interesting a friend of mine sent me uh, vedant actually yeah, lamba he Main sent street, yeah. me a very interesting podcast on lvmh on acquired which was very very interesting um and then uh, in india i love nikhil kamath's podcast we were talking about that it's so so fun and i love watching them and um of course like podcasts are a bit long but i just feel like it's very engaging also you learn stuff through conversations rather than having it doesn't feel like you're learning but you learn so much a hundred percent you're ob- ob- you're observing and absorbing so much because and you know podcasts one to one of course are interesting but even the podcast with a couple of people yeah. are it's so interactive and you know different point of views on things and so many things that i didn't had no idea about i'm like okay wow like it's a lot of knowledge a lot of you know and the more you hear the the interest grows you know and you want to read more and you want to know more um so yeah i think these are some amazing podcasts but pof is amazing yeah. for fashion yeah, and, and i feel as i started to read business of fashion i also realized that having an innate understanding as someone who's worked in 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 styling of putting things together and finding ways to make it come together you also see okay when this is how technology is changing things this is how business is evolving and do you feel that gives you the skill set to look at multiple things and see how they could come together beyond just the style part yeah 100% because you know what with 
I just feel, say, for example, with AI going the way it's going and uh, with just the way technology is evolving and things are moving so fast, I feel like it's going to eventually affect every industry, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't learn and grow, you're going to be left behind. You know what I mean? It's very important to understand how all of this works to be able to adapt, yeah. you know? I have a very good friend who is who is in the in the industry, in the tech industry, and he always says, like, it's so important to be able to adapt to moving times because otherwise you're just going to be redundant, yeah. you know? So I think that's something that makes me feel like I want to know and read and yeah. be curious, you know, and understand more and more. And honestly, I'm not... It's like the tip of the iceberg yeah. right now. I feel like there's a lot more to know. I'm just starting out, yeah. you know? Yeah. Was there a point in your journey when, you know, you 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 felt kind of stuck and you, you spoke about what I answered to you, but was there a point when in your professional journey someone said, okay, this is a piece of advice that you really need to like mm. tap into, which it stuck with you? Yeah, I mean, I've had many points in styling where I felt like there are points that I thought I was doing too much mm. and then I was just doing kind of average work. You know what I mean? Because I was dividing my time between so many people that I was not able to give 100% to anyone. That I was giving 10, 10, 15, 15% to everyone. I was just doing a lot, you yeah. know? And I was like, okay, I need to pull back because now I'm not giving enough time or effort or even my creativity is completely divided. Yeah. And my anxiety levels were shooting up because I was trying to be in five places at the same time or 10 places at the same time. How is the human beings can't do that? You know what I mean? So especially creative people. So there have been many points in my career when I've pulled back. Frida is actually one of those people that was, uh, she's a very, very, very evolved soul, mm. you know. Um, I have worked with her for years where I'm in India, she's in LA. And we've creatively collaborated and worked together because we just, she was very understanding. She was, she was like, you know, there's something we're connecting with. It doesn't matter if you're not around. We just should work together and make it work, you know. Yeah. But she would always tell me, she was like, if you're feeling something, she would always instinctively know, even though she was so far away, she'd be like, I think you need to pull back time, take a break or work with lesser people or don't work with someone if you're feeling like they're sucking the energy out of you. Yeah. Things like that, you know. Um, if someone's energy is feeling toxic to you, you got to work lesser with them because then you can give that energy to everyone else, you know. So I think there are lots of points in my career. Yeah. Maybe every couple of years, there used to be some time that I used to go through where I wasn't being able to do very well and someone in my life would point that out to me, yeah. you know? My sister is my biggest critic. She'll always, like, I'll post something on Instagram and she's like, this is shit, you know what I mean? And I would feel really bad about it. And I'm like, why are you saying that? And she was like, but, well, I have to tell you, you know, if I don't think it's good enough. And you need like, people like that in your life. You need people like that in your life. And I feel bad at that point, but when I look at it later, I'm like, okay, I need that sounding board. And I'm in that sounding board in her life as well. So I feel like you need some people in your life like that. Yeah. yeah. I feel the energy thing is so important at what you just said. Because you know it when someone's really draining energy from you. Oh my God. Um, there's this term, actually the, the, the other book here, which is called Atlas of the Heart. Um, Brené Brown talks about this thing. She calls it, um, um, think of ourselves as candles. Yeah. Um, who's making your candle glow brighter and who's putting it off yeah um and you have to always make sure you you gravitate you more towards to. you have to because i feel people around you can either uh, make you shine brighter mm. um or or kind of elevate your energy or they can suck your energy yeah. man. like sometimes people that are going through their own thing have toxic behaviors and then they can really pull you down yeah. so I feel like it's very important to be very observant of people that you're working with people that are that are you know taking your energy down because you don't want to be around those people yeah. you know yeah. you got to step away from it whether it's money or whether it's whatever else it doesn't matter you know I think you got to think of is it a nice way to step away or is it does, I think the stepping away has to be in a way which is like in a very nice way, not available, you know, or uh, you gotta wean it out. Hmm. 
it can't be like you can't go you can't cut to black basically you, you can't to... yeah you got to wean it out slowly yeah. yeah but i think i have done that in my life and i've and i feel like i'm better off i've learned the hard way yeah. sometimes had people in my life that are not good for me that are personally and professionally both and slowly slowly understood over time and i think that's what experience is right you got to go through it also because you you i think initially you see so many shiny objects you want to go after all of them yeah and then over time you like okay maybe not this one maybe not this one yeah like for example like you know for the longest time i would talk hear about people doing therapy and stuff like that i only started it last year hmm. i feel like it helps you personally professionally emotionally spiritually in all ways and i feel like everybody needs it yeah honestly living in bombay living in any hectic city where you're working and you know you're trying to balance your work life personal life family life yeah. everything you need it even if you're a single person married person whatever it is or dating or whatever i think it really um, grounded me you know yeah for sure also makes you kind of say things out loud which you wouldn't normally say right yeah. it lets you like going kind to of speak your mind it makes you introspect your own patterns whether it's and i think it really helps you you know in all ways even at work you don't realize you know certain things and also i think sometimes sometimes we i feel like we tend to feel like especially now because of social media and because everybody has a voice we tend to give too many opinions on things you know what i mean everybody has an opinion about everything about everything and i just think sometimes all this stuff makes you reflect back and be like okay you don't have to say something you know we don't have to say because we have a platform to say yeah. you know yeah so i think yeah sometimes it's best to kind of hold back not yeah. say it yeah and you realize in some time that you didn't need to say anything <laughs> and then you regret it later so you rather hold back and say hold back again. yeah and then later if you reflect back and you have to say something that's different but sometimes you just say it because everyone is saying it or you have feel like you need to say it but you don't you know you know talking of saying it because everybody else is saying it that also tends to happen with personal style yeah because oh everyone's dressing a certain way everyone's doing this thing this seems to be what the trend is right now everyone's way um, you know like till a couple of months ago everyone's talking about why aren't you wearing clothes that aren't um aren't like bigger fits and and not like you mean oversized oversized stuff like that and i'm like i just don't think i i look super skinny if i wear them but i think if you're self assured yeah. and evolved and you know yourself you won't get you that all this stuff won't deter mm, you you yeah. know what i mean you'll know who you are what your style is uh what you like what you don't like if you if you have clarity of thought na how does someone get that especially sit with in, yourself in, in, a in life bit. and there is also like what you wear i think sit with yourself a little bit understand what you like don't like like don't get so affected by what people feel and what people say and what people think um because at the end of the day your opinion on yourself is the one that matters yeah. the most you yeah. know what i mean yeah. when you look at yourself in the mirror what you see and the way you dress and how you feel that's what matters what that's what actually matters you know but i think in a world where everyone's giving opinions and with body shaming and lots of other things you know fashion shaming and all of this i think people are very affected by what people the world has to say you know and i think social media as well you know it's a big thing like it's instant validation or instant criticizing you know and people are very affected by it but i think it's damn important that's why sometimes take that step back and you know get off social media for some time and you know i mean coming from me i'm constantly on social media i'm constantly and like now i'm feeling the need to like yeah. back off a little bit because yeah. i'm just like i just need that time to myself you know what i mean and i don't want to be i don't want anyone to know where i am you know um so i think i think yeah being self assured and and understanding your opinion is one that matters the most yeah as i've gotten older i also realized that that initially you see what okay, what's going on and i think maturity yeah yeah as you get older you realize stuff. what what works for you and you play around that mm. and whenever someone says okay what are like 
must haves that you should have or what i'm like but everyone's really must haves are different by yeah. the way you know i give a list of girls must have mu- boys must have and all. how many times have you been asked that question uh, ha- thousand <laughs> times but i feel like and and i'm okay to answer that yeah. there are some wardrobe essentials and all that stuff that women can have men can have but actually everyone's must haves are different everyone's style is different everyone's um language that they are speaking in terms of their style is different yeah. but yeah i mean you know it's something that it's something that is has to come organically naturally to you yeah. certain things that are important to you in your life and i think somewhere everybody knows that and maybe a stylist can just help you recognize that more yeah i also sometimes feel that there was an old school way of doing some things which we've all forgotten but are revisiting now like i remember as a as a kid i would watch my my grandfather and he would go to this one particular tailor um and get his shirt stitched no one else no one else so go by material get it stitched because he said no no, no one gets the fit exactly no one gets the for him it was he always wore half sleeve shirts yeah. and it never came to the right point on his arm for him if it ever was wow. bought so you know, it has to be there that's where i'm comfortable yeah but it. you know when i was younger as well i think maybe that subliminally somewhere influenced me as well my father was very particular my dad played cricket for india and he was a cricketer and he was very particular about his style and where his suits were made and where his shirts were made and etc etc again went to one person only who got it done for him and even today like very particular about how he puts himself together and my mom has the most insane collection of sarees like incredible you know jewelry and sarees and stuff like that and i and she has her own style and her own um eye for it you know and when i was growing up i saw that in both my parents yeah. you know that they had their own innate sense of style which they stuck with today also when my mom will go out somewhere it'll always be a beautiful sari whether it's a traditional sari or whether it's a modern sari or whatever it is it's just something that she it was her personal expression you know and same with my father and i think i grew up with that you know and somewhere i kind of imbibed that sense of like understanding um what that meant to them and then eventually what that meant to me in my life you know and that i was also somebody who was like my mom says when i was a kid i would be like no i don't want to wear this i want to wear this you know so i had my own opinions about like the way i want to be presented as a kid also you know i have a, so my my daughter started saying this recently she's six she's like um if you try to make her to wear this and she's like my body is my body i'm going to pick this other thing and i'm like one thing six years old but i, I love get it. that i get it she said my body is my body so i'm like fair cute. enough that's what you want to wear i love it she's expressing herself yeah. with her fashion <laughs> some of those choices are suspect but i'm letting her like <laughs> it's okay. go with it let us wear suspect choices and eventually she'll find her own yeah style yeah and but actually i shouldn't judge her i had many suspect choices as a kid um, i have had many i've had many what many. is your most suspect choice i'll i'll tell oh, you mine man. if you will if you will reveal yours you know not my suspect choice but my dad like i feel like i was like a bit of a guinea pig for mm. him i used to have beautiful long hair and uh, my mom was very like my mom is just like any other punjabi mother my mom is very touchy about hair and all one day my dad has taken me to the barber and cut my hair and i've come back with like a mushroom cut or a boy cut or something like that and i think my mom was traumatized and then my dad would make me wear very like like i became a bit tomboyish in my style also because i was like okay now i have to go with this vibe you know <laughs> <laughs> so i think i had a bit of a sass you know a uh, phase with oh. that but i feel like yeah it was it's everyone's had that you know i look at like old pictures yeah. and i'm like oh god what was i wearing you know i can't even like post this yesterday in fact i posted some pictures because it was ayan's birthday and i posted some like childhood pictures and i'm like i'm like what am i wearing it's so embarrassing i don't know what to post it you know some sailor dress and so i think we've all, we all had, had sailor dresses i've realized everybody had a sailor dress one sailor dress or one, one sailor dungri. yeah <laughs> um they would be and one. i used to wear hair bands and oh god so i was very influenced by bollywood in the clothes i wanted to wear when i was mm. when i was a kid so i had a fluorescent shirt fluorescent yellow shirt i have on oh my god like i have um, i used to be a huge pravdeva fan so i had the balloon pants he had in uh, humse mukabla yeah, which yeah, i got yeah. stitched specifically 
Uh, but even I, I was a Bollywood fan. I even certain Bollywood clothes of mine, when kuch kuch hota hai, came out, I wanted to dress like Rani Mukherjee or like Kajol or whatever. So all that Bollywood influences were there for all of us. I think we were growing up and we saw the movies and I feel those influences. Sadly, now no one dresses like that. Now, now it's not Bollywood. It, that, I feel that, that's where things have merged. The world's kind of merged where what you see in movies is what you're going to be seeing in uh, you know on social media so i think that's m- that merger has happened but i think when you were kids it was like i remember when hamap ke kon came out and my mom was telling me that the the hamap ke kon sarees was such a massive thing like yeah, she was like yeah. i can't deal with so many of these orders because they were all that like literally everybody wanted that style oh wow and Amazing. they want this movie that song this one wore it i want yeah that. yeah yeah of course there was a lot of that yeah. happening which like you saw something in a movie and also at that time because of no social media we would see it in the movies we would see it on tv that's all yeah there was no other medium to see that so you were like oh my god it's like i want to look like that you know my mom i remember in college she said they would only wear sarees the way rekha used to dress you know they would stitch everything accordingly and yeah. they would go to work you know i mean go to college or whatever so there was a lot of that bollywood influence people wanted to dress like their favorite stars yeah, yeah. So if you actually think about it, you don't get in, just get influenced by people. You actually get influenced so much more by what they wear. Yeah. But sometimes you don't realize that might not look as good on you. Yeah. But you are trying to ape something and hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there something you'd want to tell yourself when you started off in your career that you know now, which you, that you wish you knew then? Yeah, I think stop worrying. Like, don't worry too much. And uh, don't. don't uh i was very rebellious by nature so just just relax a little bit like don't be so rebellious by nature as well personally and professionally both i was very rebellious by nature um and i think yeah i think your point of view your your the other person's point of view as well i would be ready to take on someone you know now i'm not like that now i step back and i hear and i think that comes with maturity yeah. um and i think be patient you know everything has its own time everything happens in its own time um and yeah just wait for the right time for things to happen yeah yeah thank you so much for doing this this has been thank fun thank you yeah